Join me, Colin Marshall, your host, for this episode of Radiant Live as we explore slab heating cables. The first step before you install a slab heat cable is to pick a control location. You want the control location to be accessible so you can come in and easily change temperature settings or turn the control on and off. In this application, what we've done is we've installed two pairs or a pair of conduits. One will be used for the electrical lead feeding the actual heating cable. The other will be for the sensor that runs up to the control. Now the sensor is important to make sure we install it at the time of the cable. The sensor will be placed in the rewire area. This sensor allows the control to determine what the floor temperature is. As we install the, the electrical lead in the conduit, make sure that the connection point between the lead and the cable doesn't go in the conduit. We'll make sure we don't bend this. If we were to bend this portion, we run the risk of breaking it or damaging the connection to the heating mat or heating cable. Doing so may cause this not to work properly. In this particular application, we're installing the wire at six inches on center. Nice thing about that spacing for this application is that it's the exact same grid spacing. So we're able to run the cable just up the grid. We want to make sure that the spacing matches the application. This is a garage that doesn't have insulation underneath. We're not using this necessarily to heat the room to 70 degrees. 60 degrees is really where they're wanting it just to add comfort as they get in and out of the car. If it's an interior space like the kitchen or a bedroom, we may need to go tighter spacing because of the heat loss. In those applications, we would typically see insulation underneath the slab as well. So depending upon the application and design profiles, we'll dictate the insulation needs and the cable spacing. Now one of the things that we're doing here as we install the cable is Corey is at one end of the room and I'm at the other and we're actually just doing a gross install back and forth, back and forth. This is allowing us to set our spacing and move quickly across the floor. Once we get the cable down, what we'll do is we'll come back through and we'll fill in in between at the proper cable tie spacing. What we want to do is make sure the cable ties are spaced about every two to three feet to make sure that as we pour the concrete slab, the cable's not going to shift or lift or move on us. And then once we get the cables installed, we'll come through and we'll clip them off. In this project, we're actually doing the garage. Now, one of the nice features of this garage is this bump out where the lights are actually able to come in and give a little bit more depth to the room, but we want to make sure that we cover the floor in this area as well because we're not really sure what's going to go in here after the construction is done. It could be a workbench, it could be any number of things. We'll make sure we get the floor evenly heated in this area just in case. So as you can see, what we've done is we've came in and we were able to weave the cable back and forth to cover this area, keeping it in line with the rest of the floor to allow the next run of wire back to be evenly spaced. As you install it, make sure you maintain the proper wire spacing for the project. In this case, as we moved across, one thing to keep in mind is on the cable itself, you'll notice that there'll be a color change. So this is actually an indicator on every cable that is produced that indicates the midway point of this particular spool. In this case, we want to make sure that we are halfway where we should be for the coverage area that we're using for that particular spool cable. If we're not, we need to go and look and see what needs to be adjusted. In this application, we're using several spools, so we need to know what area is going to be covered by which spool. One of the great features of the slab heating cable is the end splice. This end splice allows the circuit to be completed so that when you connect the cable to the control, you have one point of connection to, to have to worry about. What we need to make sure is that this end splice stays intact on the job site. We don't want to cut this to make it shorter. Doing so is going to change the heating output of the cable and potentially change the wire temperature. So make sure we don't cut it to make it shorter. Keep the end splice intact. On every job site, things happen. If the cable is damaged by accidental 
uh, reasons. Somebody drops something on it. There is a repair kit that you can use to make that repair. Those repair kits are designed just for that application. Again, we don't want to cut the cable to make it shorter. Cool fall mornings are just a sign that winter is a few days away. But for this home, they don't have to worry about those cold days as they install a slab heating cable to keep the place warm and comfortable.